Oh dear God, this video looks and sounds awful, but don't worry, it's completely intentional and believe me, I'm going to do something about it. Hello video people, welcome back, this is Harv, Video Order Stuff, and today for you, I'm going to tell you my tips for getting much more professional results in your workspace. And I'll show you how I went from this to this. Let's do it. Straight away, I'm gonna save you from having to listen to the horrible internal mic of the Canon EOS R by setting up a nice condenser mic over my head. Ah, oh, yes, how much better is that? Audio is so underappreciated. I've chosen the AKG C414, which is an expensive mic, and I'm only using it because I've owned it for years, and it's just from when I used to do a lot more audio. You could just go with a Rode NT-USB, which will do a stellar job, as well as things like lapel mics and such. But I've always preferred this style of microphone because they just sound so fat and crisp. Of course, you should always edit your audio. I like to add an equalizer and sneaky peek, here are my settings that I use. I take away all the rumbly frequencies under 100 hertz because you can't really hear them. I give it a small boost to the warm low frequencies between 100 and 150 hertz to add some richness, and I cut out about, yeah, a little bit of the 250 hertz range, which is considered quite a boxy sounding area. I like another cut at around 2500, which can take off a bit of the spikiness, and then I like a good boost to the high frequencies to add a crisp, airy quality. Right, now let's sort out this awful image, and the first thing I'm gonna do is to turn off these room lights and switch to some proper video lighting. Yes, that's so much better. Here I'm using an affordable LED panel in combination with an umbrella just off camera right. We get the much higher quality of light as household lighting tends to have weird color and more tint. Plus it's a way more flattering light because of the diffusion that the umbrella gives us. And just a quick tip for using an umbrella with your lighting, the further away you, you position your umbrella from your light source, the more diffused the light will be. I like the look we have so far, but I know there's still so much more room to make it look cooler. So next I wanna add some fill light to the background, which doubles up as a hair light. I'm gonna add a second LED panel with a little less diffusion just out of the frame on camera right back here. Oh yeah. Now we've got even more light across the frame, plus a nice soft backlight on me. You could go nuts with the positioning of this light, but I'm just going with a two light setup for this room. At the moment, I'm using a wide angle zoom. It's Canon's excellent 16-35 f4, but I think it's gonna look way better with more background blur. So I'm gonna swap to Canon's 35 millimeter f2 and move the camera back just a little bit. So there we go. Now I've been able to use a wider aperture. I'm now at f2, I was at f4. So I've got more background blur and I was able to lower the camera's ISO so my footage will be cleaner and have better color. It's getting there, isn't it? But I think we can make the background look, look more interesting. I've put up some fairy lights on the wall, which I really like because they add nice little bokeh balls. Let's get them on. Nice, but that's not enough for me. Personally, I really like a mix of color temperatures for my accent lights. So just here over my shoulder, I've got a table lamp with a large Edison bulb, which gives you a really beautiful tungsten warm light. Check it out. Hey, it's pretty cool and quite inexpensive. By the way, I've made a kit with everything mentioned in this video, which is linked below, so you'll find all the prices there. It's a good way to support the channel by clicking through and checking stuff out. Next, I'm gonna add a strip of warm LED lights behind my computer, behind. This is perhaps not something that you'd notice usually, but it's a really cool addition. Switch it on, buddy. There it is. It just adds a little life to shadow areas that would normally be neglected. Love it, but all of the additional accent lights are completely optional and definitely not necessary for getting a pro looking setup in your space. I just like them and I suppose I've been using this style of setup for so long that it might be considered my style. Now that all my lights are set up, the next thing I wanna do is to do a proper white balance. And this is an important step because your camera doesn't know what the lighting conditions are. So if you use auto white balance, the color could be way off. And plus, look, I've got all these accent lights of vastly different color temperatures all around me that could just confuse things so much. For this video, I'm shooting 
as I already mentioned, on a Canon EOS R, and I usually find that Canon's auto white balance to be slightly too warm. So what I'm gonna do is to start by matching the temperature of my key light, this one just here, which in this case is 5500 Kelvin or daylight, and then I'm gonna tweak from there. That's better. One thing to note is that whatever camera you're shooting on, if you're shooting in log mode, I would advise switching to a standard mode to make it easier to judge your white balance. And that's pretty much how I do it. As for color grading, I'm not gonna go into that in this video, but I may make a whole separate video just for that. Um, just so you know, I shot this whole video in C-Log and I'm using these Phantom LUTs Utopia preset with some tweaks in my color wheels, a contrast curve, a little bit of vignette and just a touch of sharpening and that's it. So there's a few really important things you can take away from this video and the first one is the importance of off-camera audio and really I'd recommend if you haven't tried it before, try a nice condenser mic just over your head, I'm sure you'll love the results. Secondly is to make sure that your lights and particularly your key light is of a high enough quality, you need that high CRI rating to get a really nice looking skin tone. Thirdly, don't get me wrong, I really love the convenience of zoom lenses but for video, in my opinion, you can't beat primes. It's really easy to get great image quality for really not very much money when you're looking at prime lenses. Of course, you should never neglect your background, and if that's looking good, then all the better. Lastly, I'm sure most of you don't need reminding to do a really good white balance, but it does make a huge difference. So there we go, that's how I went from this horrible looking and sounding shot to this properly exposed, properly lit, properly white balance, and way more interesting looking shot. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and my latest upload will be just underneath. If you're not subscribed already, then definitely do it, of course. <laughs> just hit the blob that's over this shoulder. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.